So, well, I think uh, I decided to talk about this because I think it is it is pretty pretty easy to communicate it in a few minutes. So, well, um, I'm going to talk about heat kernels. So, let me start by the heat kernel in the in the reals. So, imagine the reals, <coughs> and the heat equation is something like this. Let's say for function g. Sorry. And I'm interested in uh, a g such that whenever uh, you evaluate it at zero, then this is a Dirac's delta. So imagine I'm in a point x. Here I have my Dirac's delta. And then it will start to flow. And it will picture so the a time, let's say, t equals t0, for some t0 that is positive, you will find something like this. So the heat is diffusing somehow uh, along the, the reals. Now, well, the second part of the title is uh, point-wise mon monotonicity. And here you can see it. For a fixed time, from x, this, this kind of graph is uh, monotone decreasing. So it is radially monoton monotone decreasing. Now, how can you prove something like that? Well, in the real it's pretty easy, even in, in the clean place, in, in clean uh, space, because you can compute the heat kernel explicitly using Fourier analysis. And if you do so, then you will get that the solution, the fundamental solution, is something of this form. 1 over square root, and then the exponential of the distance. Let me write it this way, over 40 if I'm not mistaken. Now, you can go here. If you go to high dimensions, then you have a, uh, the exponent there. And then you can just uh, take derivatives and check it out, that it is, a, it is a decreasing thing on the distant function. Now, you can ask the same question in different manifolds. But before that, uh, let me think about this uh, in a different way. So you have a particle, and then the heat, uh, the heat equation is related to a Brownian motion starting from x. So this is somehow saying that the farther you go away from x, that is the starting point where your particle is starting to do uh, the Brownian motion, it is more unlikely to find the particle. OK, so maybe you can think about the same equation, with the, uh, but now the, uh, the, the Laplacian will be a Laplace Beltran operator in, uh, for example, for instance, in the hyperbolic space. So you can imagine it here. And what happens to the fundamental solution? Well, the same heuristics applies in this case. You have a point. This is infinite distance. And then your particle starts to wiggle here. And the farther away you are, the more likely it is to find your particle. But if you look at the explicit expression, uh, in this case, let's say in the hyperbolic, it is something like this. This is square root of 2 over, I think it is square root, uh, sorry, 4 pi t 3 halves. And then here you have some exponential of time. And then here you have the distance, infinity. And then let's say that this is going to be the, the variable where I'm integrating in. It, it is something like this. The hyperbolic cosine beta minus the hyperbolic cosine of the distance. It is something like that. You go to the books and check it out. And well, you can try to do the same thing. And well, this is a little bit messy. But actually, it is going to be true. And that's, that's the, the 13 facts that I, I want to talk about are related to this thing. But here, you have an explicit formula. Now, if you go to high dimensions, there are some explicit formulas as well. And it, they are related by some reference. Uh, well, in any case, what I'm trying to, to say saying, they, saying this is that this uh, is a little bit complicated just to take derivatives in. So maybe a different argument may work out. So we have something that, that is flat, something that it has a negative curvature, constant negative curvature. So what is missing? Uh, the sphere. Oh, I mean, so it seems like something natural to do, to think about the sphere. So now we have the sphere. And imagine, OK, I wanted to do that from the North Pole. So let's do it again. So something like this. And here, 
we have to imagine that this is x, and we have a delta, uh, Dirac delta there. So we have all the heat concentrated in that point, and then we want to start flowing with the heat kernel. So if you look really close to x, this is almost flat, as many people think it is. And <laughs> well, <laughs> well, in any case, if you look at it really, really closely, then uh, it will look like a Gaussian. But you will be missing something else from the, uh, from the topology. Now, your particle starts to move from here, but maybe when you get to the, to the south pole, so well, anyways, so when you get to the antipode, then the antipodal point, uh, then maybe the, the probabilities are starting to, to, to add themselves somehow. I don't know if you see that, but somehow it is not trivial as it is. The heuristics in here doesn't work here because this, this space is finite somehow. So it is, it is rappling somehow. OK, but then you can ask, OK, maybe you have even for the, for the two-dimensional sphere, let's say, just to fix ideas. So I'm in a really, really specific case. Then maybe we have some formula like this. And maybe we can check. OK, the formula is something like that. So let's say in the sphere, two-dimensional sphere, then you will have sum over, let's say, n equals zero infinity. And here you have the eigenvalues of the Laplacian. And here you can have some guys that depend on the distance, because the distance is, for instance, a, an invariant of the equation. It doesn't matter which direction you're, you're moving to. And these guys, you can, you can say things about them. They are ultraspherical polynomials, they are Legendre polynomials. You know things about that, those guys. But what you know is that these guys oscillate quite a lot. And maybe, well, you don't really know how to, how to understand this, this kind of sum. And actually, there is not, or, or, or it is not known, whether there is a formula like this, a closed formula like this, where you can differentiate with, with respect to, to the distance. Now, if you try to prove the same statement that this guy decreases, just looking at this formula, well, you can try to use some inequalities. Uh, you can go to Seco's book, orthogonal, orthogonal polynomials, and try to prove it by hand. And then you will realize, or at least I wasn't able to do anything else, then you will prove this when t is big enough. So OK, there's something going on. And of course, if you prove that for a small t, maybe you can do convolutions. They cannot be convolutions, but something like that. Maybe you can get the same estimates for t bigger. But you have to do that for t small. But at the same time, this guy uh, intuitively is flat when you're close to it. So how, do you, how can you overcome these difficulties? Well, uh, now. Now that this seems to be a little bit hard to do, let me say that some guy took care of this, uh, of this, of this guy. And there is a theorem uh, due to Anderson. That realized that he could prove this theorem for the, uh, so, so this is true. So they are decreasing, point-wise decreasing. That means, let me say it again, that for a fixed time, it is decreasing as a function of the distance. And the distance here, of course, goes from 0 to pi. depends on your, on your choice. So this is true. And he proved that for n equals 1, well, OK, n equals 2, and n equals 3, just that. And it is fun. It is fun because the proof uses a lot of things about uh, the young polynomials, uh, theta functions, whatever. But it, it couldn't go farther away. Now, let me. Uh, state uh, another theorem uh, from this year. So actually, this is a Colorado. OK, so well, anyways, a theorem. Uh, and this is due to uh, Nowak, Sjogren, and Sadek. And this says that this is true for any. Any end. OK. That's any sphere. Right? That's sphere. any sphere. Any, any, sp any sphere. Any sphere. OK, maybe this is misleading. Yeah. So, so anyways, let me say for any sphere, comma. OK. And well, how do they do that? Well, they prove some kind of recurrence that, uh, and it allows them to prove that the theorem for 
odd dimensions, and then they prove something else, so they could prove it for even dimensions. So, okay, so far so good. Uh, this is pretty nice. So what Again, you're in using explicit formula. Uh, explicit formula, explicit polynomials, integrals of the Miller type, and, and stuff like that. You can prove something like that. Now, uh, what about making some perturbation of the sphere? Porque, uh, porque, oh, sorry, this is Spanish. So because, <laughs> because, um, because uh, this sphere is always a standard sphere, okay? With the standard metric. So this is uh, the theorem I want to talk about. So let me state the theorem. And this is joint work, uh, joint work with uh, Alonso Aran, uh, Chamizo, and, well, myself, and Albert Mas. And we deal with a very, very specific kind of uh, of uh, perturbations of the sphere. So again, let's let's state it in in, in dimension. So in ambient di dimension three, but it works as well in, in higher dimensions. That's part of the beauty of this theorem, I, I guess. So imagine that you do something. You take some curve here that is close here, somehow, and then you make it. Uh, uh, okay, you make, make the symmetry work for you, and then you will get something like this. That is a sphere. It's symmetric and it is surface rotational revolution. Uh, surface revolution. That's what, what I was trying to find. <laughs> Thank you. So <laughs> I make a, a, a surface of revolution out of my curve, and this is kind of a sphere with a different metric. And then, of course, uh, I will take this point as the North Pole, let's say X as, as before. I will put there some Dirac's delta, and then I will try to figure out if it is decreasing until the South Pole. And the, uh, the theorem. It says that this is true. This is true, no matter how you make this this deformation. And now for the last minutes, uh, well, the proof. Let, let me let me just tell you that it is an application of the maximum principle. Uh, it is not that hard. It is elementary, but at the same time, we have to do some things that I don't know. Uh, it, it wasn't obvious for us. And now let me state the question. Just to finish that uh, we don't know how to answer. So imagine that you go to uh, some different point over there. So of course, again, if I go to some plane near this point, let's say, let's call it Y, I put my elastic delta there, and I try to follow the, to follow the flow, and stop at a certain time, any time, and look if, if the function it is decreasing, then uh, it might be true, it might not be. But for small enough, Epsilon, this seems likely to happen, to, to be true. So now, uh, if you look at the examples, and the examples are the spheres and uh, tori, then you say, okay, for how many time, for how many, for which radius, uh, this is true. So if you choose a direction, it seems that it might work until you cut yourself. So, okay, this is not very well explained. So let me just, uh, Picture a torus, a torus. So in a torus, imagine that I'm here with a loss of generality, and then I choose a direction. So of course, I cannot be, it cannot be decreasing until I hit this boundary. That is not a boundary, okay? But this is the cut locus of the torus. So it cannot be true until then because, for example, I can I can travel this way and then I will get to the other way. And of course, if it is decreasing this way, it should be uh, increasing this way because it is decreasing this way. So the question is, uh, is it true or not that um, uh, the, the fundamental solution of the heat kernel, sorry, for fixed time and fixed x, any x, is decreasing uh, uh, sorry, for y um, Okay, for y before, so for, for those y's, okay, this is not very well explained. So, so okay, choose these guys and choose a direction. A direction, tangent at x0, and let it flow. Then 
it is decreasing. Is it decreasing? <laughs> Until you cut. Well, OK. The cut locus. For any, for, any for, for any surface, let's say, or any manifold. We don't really know. And if you go to the examples, it seems to, it, it, it isn't likely to be true. But I, I think it is a beautiful question, so that's all I wanted to say. <laughs>